Hello and welcome to the first video in my artist interview series. I'm very lucky to be joined today by Peter Robinson, the DJ. Hello. 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 Um, so, he's been very gracious. Uh, luckily, he's a very good mate of mine from playing in Pearl's Cab Ride and uh, he's agreed to join me today to do a bit of grilling about your, uh, your musical career. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you're a whole local all your life. Yes, all my life. Yeah, born and bred. Yeah. Right. Never lived anywhere else really i mean i'd sort of live on the outskirts now but uh yeah yeah grew up oh, in all yeah yeah about 30 yeah. years yeah uh yeah and the rest <laughs> yeah yeah i mean so what was it like growing up in all as a kid because obviously a lot of big names have come from all in the music scene uh yeah we weren't really sort of that aware really as a kid just what sort of heritage the city's got i guess um I mean, growing up when all was ace, you yeah. know, it was all sort of like, we had a gang, uh, we had a 10 foot, and that's really all you needed back then, you know, there wasn't anything like, no, the only screen we had was a telly, um, <laughs> and we were just out climbing trees and uh, playing sort of rugby and, you know, a bit of football and uh, finding sort of things we shouldn't be finding in privet <laughs> edges and all sorts of stuff that you do when you're a kid growing up, you know, um, but, no, our family life was fantastic, you know, I mean, my dad worked at sea, so we didn't see loads of him, you know, but obviously he was away earning a living and my me, mum me uh, brought us up, me and my two older brothers, so yeah, yeah, yeah it was good. Oh, that's Brilliant. impressive. So, I mean, in them days, we're not talking too long ago, but in them days, obviously the internet weren't as prevalent as it is now, you know, you no. can't just YouTube, whack it on, see what you like. Didn't exist. So, how did you get into your sort of scene? Where, where did you start getting influence? Uh, my brother. My, my eldest brother, our Dave, is uh, he was he was sort of like on the cusp of that sort of post-punk goth era. Right. So he was like one of those sort of first goths, I guess. And he used to go to Spiders a lot, and uh, he was a music obsessive. And the stuff he was listening to was sort of like uh, early U2, the Skids, when the Smiths started up, uh, Sisters of Mercy, stuff like that. But also he. Um, it was very much into the uh, sort of cut and paste and real early sort of hip hop stuff. Right, and Go-Go, yeah. uh, which was like a form of funk that came from Washington DC. Um, and the biggest sort of Go-Go band was Trouble Funk. So I wasn't like massively into like the sort of indie sort of post punky stuff, but certainly the uh, the hip hop stuff and the Go-Go especially really like struck a chord with me. But at the same time, that was like an informal musical education, I guess. <laughs> But I had a formal musical education as well through skills and stuff, through playing the trombone and playing in like the uh, the City Hall youth uh, swing band, which was like big band jazz stuff. So, and I think I was about 13, 14, and we played it um, played in Switzerland at Montreux and stuff like that. So it was pretty amazing. So I was kind of like had a formal musical education and then a very much. Uh, uh, which heavily influenced me, like an informal musical education right. too. Oh, but so I have my brothers to blame for most of it. <laughs> Usually it's family. And then my other brother, our Andy, um, he was a bit more of, I guess, what you'd call a townie, um, but he was into sort of stuff like Japan and Level 42 and a yeah. uh, bit more of a sort of like, I don't know, but I, I wasn't really into that then. But I guess I'm more into that now as I've got older. So. Quiet taste. Yeah, 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 it yeah. was a bit, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So was it through the schools that you started picking up the trombone? Yeah, well, it was tuba first. Right. Yeah, I played tuba for a year <laughs> and then um, played the euphonium yep. for, for a few years. And then sort of, I was a bit bored playing in orchestras and stuff because as a, as, a, as a tuba player or a brass player generally, you know, you sat there counting most of the night and you get to play like five notes at the end of the piece. So. You can't write. Yeah, which, yeah, <laughs> I have trouble counting. Uh, but, yeah, it wasn't really my thing, so I, I mean, me, me, uh, me tutor was a trombonist anyway. Right. So he taught me right from the start, even though I was playing tube and stuff, so. Um, yeah, so, so I'd, I'd switched to the trombone, and uh, me, me mum and dad saved and, and, and bought me my first trombone and, and you know I'll be forever grateful for that but uh, yeah, yeah excellent so. excellent so a real like I say good grounding in music coming from all from the music services from your family 
Yeah, I mean, my, my, my family art sort of musical as such. My dad played washboard in a, in a skiffle band in the 60s, uh, and they cut a 7-inch, which I, I ain't got. So if anyone's got a copy of uh, a 7-inch by the Sioux City 7, they were like Hull's premier sort of skiffle band, and I think they did some stuff with Lonnie Donegan and like live stuff and what have you. So my dad was like, before he before he went away in the in the Merchant Navy, he was uh, he was a skiffle board, uh, a, a skiffle player and a washboard, and um, yeah, I think my mum played piano when she was younger, but um, my brother, our Andy, he played trumpet. He was like a really good trumpet player at school and stuff. So I kind of. I guess I followed that line in so much as I was his younger brother and the school sort of thought, well, he's really good, <laughs> he needs to play an instrument too. Yeah. Which I don't know if that kind of thing happens nowadays, really. No, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Well, that's good. Well, we'll get that in the description. If anyone has that, please get in contact. I'm sure we'll be able to acquire something for you. Yeah. Um, and I, I suppose we can't really leave talking a bit about Hull and growing up without where we are today in Hull, the city of culture, 2017. Yeah. I mean, uh, what's your views on it? Uh, I'm thinking that um, I'm going to go with the flow and see what happens and you know I, I, I knew one of the people who wrote the initial bid to get on like the shortlist for, yeah. I know even not new I know and uh, my joke was if we win and I was confident back then that we'd win it just because of uh, mainly Phil Redmond being on the sort of on the panel that decided and I, and I always thought he had the soft spot for the city um, and so I knew we'd win it all them years back and uh, I said I said to her I said oh um, let's just have one big party one weekend and spend all the money on getting Stevie Wonder across and like <laughs> get him in West Park or in East Park or something or I don't know somewhere then just, yeah. just have like Stevie Wonder for like all weekend <laughs> and let's forget about the rest of the year. <laughs> and she just laughed at me. And then when, when we actually won it, I, I, I'd sent her a text or a message and just sort of said, oh, is, is Stevie booked yet, you know? Um, but no, honestly, I think, it, I think it's really good. Uh, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of stuff coming in from outside of the city, um, which, yeah, yeah that's gonna happen. Um, but I, I really think that people within the city who have been doing a lot of stuff for, for like years, neons really, yeah. Um, uh, 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 up the game as a, as a result of it as well so that's positive and it's almost like you know this people have been getting a bit a little bit pissed off with what's been going on but actually it's like rather than just getting pissed off and bunkering down and not doing anything about it it's almost a case of well yeah all right i've been knocked back but i'm going to show you Bassie. yeah i'm really going to show you what what we're made of and what we can do and i think that's fantastic i must admit i, I agree with you there i think i think you're right it's a lot of people have, I've read a lot of things on, on Facebook, don't we all, um, you know, about saying, well, Hull doesn't deserve it, Hull, Hull's this, you know. Ah, oh, massively deserves it. I mean, there's, there's been stuff going on in this city for, for eons and eons, you know, I mean, like, I, as, as a 14 year old, I was breakdancing badly, but breakdancing with some <laughs> amazing dancers on Queen's Gardens, and then the sort of house, acid house stuff took off, and like, I, I wasn't massively a part of that. I was almost like on the fringes playing sort of like rare groove and soul stuff. Um, but that stuff's been going on. Like room, like when room was a bar, you know, we DJed in there uh, on a Tuesday night, and then you know there was there was massive sort of parties happening on a, on a weekend, the all nighters and stuff, and then it turned into the club, and um, then Blue Lamp, massive part of my sort of like as a DJ, you know, we did pretty much ten, nearly ten years in there every Friday night. Wow playing funk so acid jazz was very much the sort of in thing then um, but I guess as a, as, a, as a term you know I mean what what I'm into is is anything that is based in soul music so that but that's not necessarily soul as a genre but soul as a as a feeling as a gut feeling yeah. so if it's hip hop with that's got soul fantastic if it's jazz that's got soul amazing if it's soul that's got soul <laughs> believe me a lot of it hasn't um, you know it's whatever it might be really but as long as it's it's basis is in soul and it grows from there to be whatever it is house music you know what i'm, I'm not really that that fussed really i mean i'm in the onion club my night here at the polar bear uh, you know we resurrected this night a little over three years ago and uh, uh, it, 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 we, I was sort of waiting, thinking about bringing it back, but I wanted the right venue. 
and this place is amazing and the, and the management are, are amazing and it really does remind me very much of the sort of feeling and the uh, the backbone of it is very much like how the lamp and blue lamp used to be all those years ago I guess for me anyway no I think it's good like I say you've got the opportunity you've, you've seized upon it and I think a lot of people around all really appreciate just a night to come out watch some live music watch some good DJs well the live the live stuff sort of happened over the last six months or so and me and, and Dave Mr D who, 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 who DJs with me were, were obsessed with get putting and finding the best live stuff we can find and you know we, we, we've had some fantastic stuff on and uh, looking ahead to this 2017 this year of culture we've got some really amazing stuff put in but you know none of these guys are signed but the, the actual it's all about the quality and the heritage and the sort of um, not so much the heritage what's the word I'm looking for uh, the quality and the pedigree of, of the musicians is absolutely top, top class. Good, good. Well, and actually, that, if you want a good night, then Bunyan Club is free to get in. There's a band on every month, and as I said, you know we're obsessed with it. And thankfully, the Polar Bear is the place that allows us to um, sort of scratch an itch, if you like, in terms of you know. It's 12 nights out for me a year, guaranteed. <laughs> which it's is good. great. It's and I'm sure I'll get a lot more I'm sure I'll get out a lot more over this coming year as well. Good. A lot of good stuff good. going on. Well, let's do a little quick fire questions. Let's see what we can take up just towards the end of the interview. Quick fire. So I talk, I talk shit for a living. No, but there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's good to get to know you, Pete. It's good to get to know you. So, if someone comes along to Pete's DJ session, yeah. give us Maybe the top three tracks representative Ooh. of what they might hear. At the it minute, it have to be them. But yeah, the top three. Uh, it's it's kind of difficult, but uh, tuna last year for me is by an Aussie band called The Traffic, and it's a cover version of uh, White Lines, uh, Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, um, and it's amazing, uh, really, really amazing, and it reminds me a little bit of sort of Pig Bag, who were like a sort of post-punky funky band from the 80s but um, that's it so anyway that, that's that's probably a new new thing yep. um, oh god there's, there's so many <laughs> tunes that we love um, uh, it's really really hard um, uh, Esther Marrow Walk Tall which is a, an R&B tune but nice. she's really uh, sort of going off at the beginning I like I like songs that have talky bits in yep you know, it's, it's a little thing, it's not like that Jimmy Neil tune where he's going your line and stuff like that, but, uh, you know, talky bits, like Tom Jones, his, his old 70s stuff, is re- when he does talky bits, it's quite good. Uh, Esther Marrow walked all, is, is she's got a bit of talky bit on it, but then she absolutely, like, you, you know, that's, that's just a, it's a banger. And um, uh, probably a Latin tune, we, we really like Boogaloo and, and Latin yep. stuff, like on, on labels like Fannia and, and Tico. Um, Oh, which uh, which Latin tune? There's loads of them. Just just Google Fania, F A N I A. So let's um, make sure they spell that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, googling yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, pretty much everything on Fania is ace. But I'm looking at like uh, Together, Ray Barreto, amazing. Uh, anything by Joe Cuba. Um, anything by uh, Willy Bob or. Uh, stuff really awesome awesome great. but well, it's hard to pinpoint cool. just three really big breath in it it's a big breath well it is and literally you know we'll play anything um hip-hop stuff odyssey this rapper odyssey amazing um obviously trap called quest uh de La soul and uh umcs and epmd and all that stuff um beasties um so we'll play all that uh Funk stuff, obviously everything pretty much starts with James Brown, so... I must admit, I like it when yeah. you put a bit of the JBs on. Yeah, yeah, that's, JBs, that's giving up food on. for funk. Yeah. Can't beat that. Oh, uh, it's good, it's good. So, and then, the last two questions. Yeah, all right. First of all, what do you think is your biggest achievement to date, inside and out of music? Right, well, well that's easy. And going forward, what do you, are your ambitions going forward musically? Musically? Uh, biggest achievement is my daughter, which I guess is, you know, well, not everyone knows I've got a daughter, but, but yeah, that, that goes without saying. She's ace. Um, 
still been married as well that's quite good <laughs> managing that she's, she's sort of puts up with a fair bit uh, and uh, what hopes for the future yes musically just, well. musically um, just obviously I play in Pearl's Cab Ride uh, you know, there's nine of us now, I think. Yeah, it's nine it's of us now, so we're, we're, what's that? Is that like a handball team or a volleyball <laughs> team or something? It's not quite a football team. Not yet. Not uh, yet. We're you not might far get sponsored, you never yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, we're not far <laughs> off. So, yeah, just to write some new stuff, really, and, and to really uh, get, get some stuff uh, recorded and uh, released again. And, you know, just to enjoy it. Just to enjoy playing. Um, in terms of DJing, you know, I just... Just keep doing what we're doing, you know, we haven't got, got any sort of huge ambitions or anything to, to conquer the world or out like that, it's just, you know, hopefully people like what we play, which I think they do, you know, we're getting some, we're getting a, a good crowd in every month and, uh, you know, I, I do um, little bits and bobs elsewhere as well, you know, we're getting asked to sort of go and play at other places and other clubs, so that's, that's good, so Excellent. we'll see where that takes Excellent. us. Oh, good stuff. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Cheers. This, really this guy's it. the Italian Paddy McGuinness, by the way. <laughs> no likey. No likey. <laughs> no likey, no likey. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> you've joined us on a cold all night with it's a fish eye lens. Freezing. We can't wait to get Proper inside and get warm. So um, drinking beer. Thank you so much. Look after yourself. Nice one, Kate. See you. Thank now. you. There's someone at my door. It just might be.